To paraphrase Jim Wendler, if you can't do a chin up, it means you're either weak, fat, or injured. And trust me, you don't want to be any of those because for a long time, I was the guy where any time I tried to train chins, I either just straight up couldn't because my shoulders hurt too bad, or after a couple sessions, I once again, straight up couldn't because my shoulders hurt too bad. To add context to my shoulder situation, before I started powerlifting, I broke five collarbones, a shoulder blade, shattered a humerus, separated both AC joints and a SC joint, as well as had three shoulder surgeries. So shoulders have been something I have battled with for many years, although I'm very happy to report that right now at 30, my shoulders are doing much better than they were at 17. Anyways, back to the video. And I am gonna start out with the fat side of the Wendler equation, because during this process of trying to get better at doing chin-ups, I've also been cutting 12 weeks into a cut now down 56 pounds and I would be lying to you if that did not make a tremendous difference because week after week they are getting easier at a rate that is definitely way ahead of me getting stronger and that is simply due to week after week I'm having to pull less and less body weight over the bar so if you are someone who is prioritizing trying to get better at chins and you are a little bit on the heftier side it might be a good idea to use your trying to get better at chin-ups as a good excuse to be productive in executing a cut. And the next thing to talk about is going to be the injured aspect of that Wendler equation because for me at least, the biggest limiting factor on actually being able to train chin-ups was that my shoulders would just hurt way too much to actually be able to do it every single time that I tried. I lacked both the range of motion and control to get overhead as well as the tissue tolerance to support pulling myself out of that overhead range. So one of the things that I really cranked on prior to even trying to train chins was a dumbbell pullover where I'm not only just trying to reach down towards the floor to get into that high degree of shoulder flexion, I'm also trying to push upwards to let my scaps translate into elevation as I'm getting that extension to really let things open up into the range that I need to be able to access and control in order to train chin-ups. And for myself, I wanted to be able to comfortably do heavy pullovers before I even tried to get onto a chin-up bar to actually do a real chin-up. And as I was building up that initial tissue tolerance, I wasn't just doing pullovers. I was also coupling that with scap only pull ups because the pullover, the plane of loading, the force put through the shoulder is going to be a lot different than a actual chin up. So I wanted to start to prepare myself for hanging overhead. And I know I said I did scap only pull ups, but I actually started by just getting comfortable trying to hang from a chin up bar for a long duration of time because the basic ability of hanging is going to support you to have the strength to then be able to actually pull at the bottom. Once I felt good at hanging, I started to just slowly and controlled try to elevate myself by depressing the scaps only. Once that got better and better and better, I started to try to lift the rib cage forward from that scap depression to initiate the beginning pull that I want to execute when I am actually doing a chin. And to add to the strength side of the equation, I modified how I was training lat pull downs to better directly build what I needed to build in order to actually be able to do a chin. Because the biggest difference between a pull down and a chin up is that on a pull down, you're anchored to the machine, you're pulling a bar down. So it's really easy to cheat through the initial pull. Whereas on a chin up, because you are not anchored, you're just pulling your body up against gravity. There's no real way to cheat out of the bottom unless you're gonna kip like a crossfitter. And I didn't wanna kip like a crossfitter. So I made sure that when I was training my pull downs, I wasn't just momentuming through that initial pull. I was initiating with a slow pull to set that scap depression similar to the scap pull up. And then I was trying to accelerate once I got through that initial pull. So I was trying to slowly initiate, accelerate to tag lats. And this you'll find if you are doing your pull downs in a more cheatier fashion, this gets way harder, way faster, but the carryover you're going to get to a chin up, not to mention actually building lats, is going to be so much better. And at this point, if you guys have been watching my vlog, you know that my chin ups definitely are not good, but at least I'm at the point where I can actually do them and progress them with only positive repercussions. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And when I'm actually training them, knowing that I have had a history where they tend to make my shoulders jacked up, the most important thing for me is that I'm staying in the pocket as I'm doing them. That means that I'm keeping reps per set relatively low along with RPE, and then I'm trying to increase training density and increase training volume by adding one to two total reps per week as I progress. This has allowed me to go from starting out with three total reps on my very first day at trying these to making it all the way to 24 during my last total training session. And I know 24 chin-ups is not very good in the grand scheme of things. There are many people that can do many more than that, but as someone who could never do them successfully before, it is definitely definitely progress and I have never made it this far in my training career with actually training chin-ups. So I am very happy to report that stuff is working so far. So guys, if you have struggled with chin-ups or pull-ups, give this stuff a try. Start very light and gradually progress pullovers trying to not only reach as far back as you can, but as far up as you can while you're doing them. Couple that with dead hangs and scap only pull-ups to build your ability to control that initial pull. And when you're training your lat pulldowns, make sure you're doing it with a very strict intent, really controlling your way out of the bottom, then flexing hard as you finish the rep to build strength that will actually translate to your ability to pull yourself up over the bar.